Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's Midnight back again, bringing you another amazing episode of Midnight 1v1. In this episode, I am joined by a special guest and friend of mine. We have my fellow host, my co-host of Games Over Plastic, Sean Mason. He is the JRPG aficionado, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're here to talk about JRPGs um, and basically if they're better than Western RPGs, uh, which they're not. So that's the end of the episode, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. See you later. Just kidding. Sean, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to talk some JRPGs. Um, you know, if you like Western RPGs better than JRPGs, that's fine with me. But to me, I much prefer JRPGs. Much prefer. Okay. It's funny. It's funny, Sean, because I feel like you and I are like kind of almost the same person, but flipped um, because we were talking about this before. Like I've played just a just a a ton of Western RPGs, but I've only played a handful of Japanese RPGs. Like I've probably only played like maybe 10 in my life. Um, and it feels like you're like the flip side. Like you've played just a ton of JRPGs, but you haven't really dabbled too much in Western RPGs. Is that, is that fair? Is that fair? Yeah, I was going to, I was about to say that. I've probably, I've only played like the, the main mainstream, like Western RPGs. Like I've played Fallout, um, never played, like I didn't play Skyrim. Like, like, I've never played Mass Effect. I've never played The Witcher. I've never played like just like games like that. Like I, I haven't touched those. I've touched like I don't know something about Fallout attracted me to Fallout, but that was like my that was probably my first like big Western RPG I ever played. Yeah, yeah. So it's funny. It's like both of us need to experience the other side probably more um, so that we can just just have fun and experience all the greatness that the RPG genre has to. Uh, to share with us because as people know i love rpgs rpgs are like my favorite thing i'm, I'm the rpg single player gamer um so you know I've, I've been a huge fan of the western rpg but that's not what we're here to talk about today um today we're here to talk about jrpgs japanese rpgs um and really i hope that you can just share your love and maybe educate me a little bit because um, as I always say on the show, and it's kind of a meme, it's kind of a joke. Like I just do it for fun. Like it's it's for it's for the shock factor when I when I make fun of weebs and stuff. Um, it's all in good fun. Um, but I'm not a weeb, as I always say. Um, and this is evident by the fact that when I look at my games played, um, I've barely played like any JRPGs. Like I'm looking at my list here. I played Soccer Wars. That's a weeby game. I enjoyed that. Did you play that? I've not played that actually. No. Okay, that's like part dating sim, part persona fighting demons. Yeah, and you're saving Tokyo. Yeah, I know what it is. I know what it is. I just never played it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. let's see. What else have I played that's weeby in here? Uh, I played, of course. Do we consider Final Fantasy? It's kind of mainstream. I played Final Fantasy. No, that that's weebery. That's that's weebery. That's 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 JRPG. It's not like super weeby, but it's like it's it it is JRPG weebish. Yeah. So especially I'll some of the older titles. Yeah. It's funny. My first ever Final Fantasy game was Final Fantasy 13. I never played a Final Fantasy before then. Um, I played Final Fantasy 13 on the Xbox 360. I was excited. I was like, this is a beloved storied franchise. And then I hopped in Final Fantasy 13 and I was like, what is this crap? Like, I, I did not like it at all. It was super linear. If you'll remember Final Fantasy 13, it was kind of like oh, one. I, I Trust me, I know. It was like one um, corridor with not a lot of options, and I was not a fan of that. Um, but I will. So here's, the, here's the thing about 13. Revisionist history for a lot of people. A lot of people go back to that and say, oh, my God, it was super linear, blah, blah, blah. You go back and play Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy X is also very, very linear. Um, Final Fantasy VIII, also very linear. Uh, a lot of the Final Fantasy games are linear. Um, I think people were just upset with the direction that the series was going in because 13 was very much more like future uh, 13 and 12 were very like futuristic compared to like the previous genres that to kind of they had a little more fantasy um, fantasy more whimsical um, elements to it mm -hmm. um, and I think that is why a lot of people didn't like it and honestly I'm gonna I'm gonna let you in on a little secret I think a lot of people were upset that it was on 360. I'm telling you, I think a lot of a lot of PlayStation fans are like, "This is absurd." I bought my PS3 for Final Fantasy. Really? I know, stupid. Yep, I I, I honestly do. Um, I I enjoy 13, and I I think 
people who um, say it's too linear uh, need to go back and play 10 because 10 is beloved. And I think 10 is very linear. And I love 10. I love them all, but except for eight, do not like eight. It's funny. 10 is what broke Lockmort. Um, a little bit of history. Of, and broke a lot of people. A little Ten bit of history with Lockmort for people who don't know. He actually was kind of a weeb a little bit back in the day. He was playing all the Japanese, uh, all the Final Fantasy games, but he got to 10 and he absolutely hated it. And I think that's what sparked his uh, his hatred of weebery. But uh, uh, that's just so weird to me, though, what you said. Like, why would they care that it's on 360? It was still on PlayStation, right? Wasn't a, yeah, it wasn't know, exclusive. You know, no, you know how fanboys are though. They're like, they don't oh, want to share my game. Yeah, they don't want to share. It's like people upset when a game's announced for all plot. I'm like, why do you care? It's not like it's being taken away from you. Yeah. Some people are freaking weird. Um, I will say this though, I did not like Final Fantasy thirteen at all. Like at all. Like I have it rated as like like a five out of ten on my uh it's the lowest rated game on my entire backlog. But interesting. Yeah. But I will say this Final Fantasy thirteen two. I, I liked a lot that one I gave like yeah. an eight out of 10. I really enjoyed that one because it was a lot more open. There was a lot more exploration. Um, I enjoyed the main character in that, which was uh, uh, Sarah or whatever, or the lightning sister. Yeah, and yeah. I enjoyed kind of like the Pokemon like aspect where you're like capturing the monsters and then you could fight with them. I, if I recall correctly. Um, and yeah, it, I could see why you like persona. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. Um, but before we get too deep in the weeds here, I do want to give you your moment to shine here. Like I did with Locke. Um, I want you to go ahead and let the audience know your history, a little bit about yourself if you want, uh, but most importantly, your history with JRPGs and why you love them so much. All right. So as far as, uh, why I love JRPGs so much, um, JRPGs have held a very special place in my heart. I love, love traditional turn-based combat. Like something about it, I don't even know, from a young age, it just appealed to me. Like thinking out your moves and being like, oh, what am I going to do next? And I, I think it really started with just watching my dad play uh, turn-based games. I was born in 1996, so it was, you know, well into, you know, the end of the Super Nintendo era, the beginning of like the N64, the PS1 was already out. Like I was when I was born into a PS1 house, like PS1 was already in our house. Um, my dad was really into um, these turn based JRPGs. And I think that has a lot to do with he was growing up. He played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons growing up because, mm. um, you know, he, he was a kid in like the 70s and 80s. Yeah. So, you know, prime for that. And I, I think that's what appealed to him. So I grew up just around these things. Uh, he was really into anime, like very early into anime. So I grew up with anime, like VHS tapes, like of these like strange, like random dubs and random subs that I'm pretty sure were not accurate. Like if I go to my house, my parents' house now, I, there's so many VHS tapes of just these an bootleg animes from like Chinatown in Boston. Um, Cause they used to get imports from all over Asia. So you'd have stuff from Japan. You'd have stuff, you'd have stuff from all over the Asian countries. Uh, my dad used to go there all the time. But um, as far as the turn-based combat, something about it, I just really liked. And I really liked the art style of a lot of these uh, specifically the 16 bit RPGs mm -hmm. on super Nintendo. Like I remember watching my dad and my sister, like as I, as I, I'm a little kid watching them play through the various, you know, RPG, JRPGs on super Nintendo, like, Grandia, um, Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, a lot of games like that. And I just fell in love with what the characters looked like. I fell in love with, you know, I'm not a great artist, but like I would try to draw them. I would, when I'm playing out in the yard, I would pretend to be these characters. Um, and it was fun because I would, I would pretend I'm in the turn-based combat. So I'd stand there like this and be like, what's my move? I don't know why I just <laughs> did that. Just random stuff like that. And, um, the first real turn-based game I really fell in love with was Final Fantasy VII hmm. um, because I was just about four years old. So it was 2000, so it was like December of 2000, and I was four years old, and I remember watching my dad play through Final Fantasy VII and being so like amazed at that because that, that was like the, one of the first turn like big PS1 JRPGs, and I was like, "Whoa, this is this is different than these 16-bit ones we've been." we've been playing and I just watched him play it. And um, I used to beg him to not progress the story without me. It didn't, that didn't work. That didn't work. Um, but I fell in love with just the, um, the characters he, my dad would, you know, I was learning to read at the time. Like I had, I was a pretty voracious reader as a kid and I had learned to read at a young age. So um, my dad would let me to practice reading. I would read out loud, like what the characters are saying. Cause there's no voice. There's no voice in that game. 
So I would read what the character was saying. And I just fell in love with all of them. And uh, I would pretend to be Cloud. And I just really loved Cloud. And then, you know, years later, around 2003, I actually decided to play the game myself without my father. And that's when I fell in love with uh, Final Fantasy. It was not my first Final Fantasy game I played, though, because in about a year before that, I played Final Fantasy 4 and 6 on Super Nintendo, as we knew them, 2 and 3. Mm-hmm. And that's where I really fell in love with them. That's where I fell in love with the Final Fantasy series. Mm -hmm. But before that, you know, I was playing at a young age. I was playing. um, I played Chrono Trigger in like 2002, 2001, around that time. I played. Sorry, go ahead. uh, Sorry. No, Um, I played Chrono Trigger at a young age. I played Golden Sun. Golden Sun was one of my first Game Boy Advance games. And uh, again, I used to practice, re- like that was really good for me to practice reading. So I would read out loud, mm-hmm. like what the characters were saying. Golden Sun, tremendous JRPG uh, on Game Boy. It was a Game Boy Advance launch game. And I remember getting my Game Boy Advance and just, me and my sister, she got like, we each got a white one. We each got our own white Game Boy Advance and I got Golden Sun and I, that was like another just traditional turn-based combat game. And it, it, all these games kind of like, I felt I felt comfortable with them. And it got to the point where I'm like, oh, you know, I really like these style of games. So anytime a new JRPG was coming out, I'd be like all over it. I'd be like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta like research this. I gotta learn what it is. And then, you know, the PS2 era, because we were a PS2 family, not great for jrpgs i'm gonna say that that ps2 era i mean you had some like you had persona 4 came out on ps2 which uh, which that was awesome i love that yeah, game I, I remember, yeah you play you've only played golden right yep. you, you never you never played the original never played the original because i remember getting persona 4 in like t- it came out around here in 2008 like that's so it was late ps like it was ps3 was already out and i remember getting it and my mom being like why are you buying ps2 games still you have a ps3 like mom you don't get it you don't get it like i need to play this game um i remember hearing so much about my my i remember like hearing so much about persona and being like this is this is so cool and um getting persona 3 like again on psp Mm -hmm. persona 3 portable and being like oh my gosh the psp though that is a jrpg machine right there you can play so many classic Super Nintendo games, like a lot of classic Final Fantasy games. You got the Chrono, you can play Chrono Trigger on there. They had PS1 classics, so I was playing Grandia on there. I was playing Suikoden. Oh, Suikoden holds a. Sorry, I'm just going off right now, but Suikoden, I, I absolutely adore the Suikoden games. That, that's a series that um, started on PS1, and then they eventually got to PS2, and it was five games: the Suikoden one through five, and. Um, three through five are on PS2. And I, I feel like those are probably some of the better JRPGs on PS2. Mm. And a lot of these, a lot of the, what I'm mentioning right now is a lot of it is just turn-based combat. Yeah. But then you have the JRPGs that are like action-based. Like uh, they, they kind of implement turn-based, but they also, there's like some, like they implement, like they have the menu system from the turn-based, but it's like full-on action, like Kingdom Hearts. And that's when I realized, wow, I I like these games more than just for the combat. It's like I love the story and the characters, and um, so there was like Kingdom Hearts that really got me into it. And then it got to a point, probably this is probably why I have such a blind spot for like 2008 to like 2013 ish, um, where I would literally only play. It was basically JRPGs, platformers sports games mm. that was basically all i was playing like i did not play anything else i do so like I sports games playing yeah i know i was playing like a bunch of nba 2k like me that was like our go-go game it was basically nba 2k uh jrpgs and basically nintendo pretty much nintendo games um that was pretty much it for like a long time and, you know occasionally i'd play like you know like i said i i dabbled in fallout yeah i thought that was like, I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. But like, I never played Assassin's Creed. I skipped, never played, like I stopped playing Call of Duty. Like I never played Call of Duty. I've never played Call of Duty online. I didn't play Halo till 2020. Like I didn't play Gears of War till 2020. Yeah. Um, so a lot of mainstream games just missed me. Yeah. Okay. So that, that was a lot. I like that. Um, so the main things that you said really draw, uh, drew you into the genre was you really enjoyed the, uh, the turn-based combat. Um, but also some of the action stuff later on was was really fun too. Um, you also like the uh, <clears throat> what was it that you said? 
crap. The art style, like, drew me in. The art style, yeah, that was what I was going to say, like, the 16-bit, yeah, like, style. sprite-like stuff you really like. Yeah, um, the sprite, that, that, that is, like, that sprite stuff is, like, totally, like, eats at me. Anytime I see, like, 16-bit art, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my God, I get so much nostalgia, especially the 2D, and now with the 2D HD stuff. Yeah, that's the I'm thing. Like, that's the thing that really gets me too, as like an old head, as an old man. Um, whenever I see those HD 2D games, it just immediately grabs me, and I'm like interested. Like when I saw, um, um, what's the uh, the Square Enix one, the Octopath Traveler two, Octopath, looked yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, as we talked about before, the Yuden Chronicles Hundred Heroes, I thought looked super cool. I love the art style. And then very recently at the Nintendo Direct, I think you know what I'm going to say. The Dragon yeah. Quest Three HD 2D remake looked beautiful. It looks phenomenal. Um, yeah, I think that that took like that takes 2D HD to like a whole new. Oh, level. it looks so like, good. It, I think it. I think it looks better than Octopath Two. Yeah. Oh, it looks better than all wow. of them. It's like HD 2D porn almost. <laughs> like it looks so good, dude. Yeah. It's funny, Dragon Quest. That's like a that's like a traditional like turn based JRPG. Like the stories are not super in depth. That's more like focused on the combat. But I actually came late to Dragon Quest. I didn't play my first Dragon Quest till the PS2 era. Mm -hmm. We never had them growing up. That they were Dragon Warrior. We just never had them. Yeah. Um, but I've caught up on the series. I'm so hyped for Dragon Quest, and I like how they're doing it. They're releasing Dragon Quest three, and then they're doing one and two after because that's like the canonical like timeline of the mm -hmm. events so if you want to follow along you can um mm -hmm. but you, we had also mentioned that like i'm really into anime yeah i, I brought up the anime aspect and a lot weavery, of yes. anime yeah weavery translates well to jrpgs you get that art style especially once you hit the ps3 360 era a lot of the games started looking more and more like, like an that. anime like, yeah yeah like nino kuni comes to mind like um, perfectly for me. That looks like an anime. The cutscenes are Studio Ghibli. Yeah. Like, um, and Nino Kuni One again. It goes back to that classic turn-based um, combat, which a lot of games at that time were turning away from the turn-based combat. People, were like, we don't want this turn-based stuff. But Nino Kuni doubled down on it. But then they evolved, and in Nino Kuni Two, they took the more action route, and I actually really enjoyed it. And the stories are just so heartwarming, and so it's all about you know overcoming adversity and you know, taking down that powerful foe mm -hmm. and getting there. And th that's a common uh, theme in a lot of the JRPGs. And that, that really, I really like that. Yeah. So for me, let me get into my history a little bit here and, and like my thoughts on it. Um, like for me, the thing that I love so much about the Western RPG, which I feel like in the JRPGs that I've experienced, maybe is not as strong of a suit, um, is kind of like the, the narrative choice and consequence. Like the West has a lot of choice and consequence in their RPGs. Like if you think about like the Obsidian games, the Bethesda Game Studios, the Bioware games, there's a lot of choices where you're like picking like to save people or to kill people and it's going to branch the narrative and you might have different endings. Like think Baldur's Gate 3, for example. Um, there's just oh, yeah. so so many different paths it's like a spider web right and uh bioware is really known for that with mass effect like you can easily you can always do at least two playthroughs you can have the paragon playthrough and you can have the renegade playthrough um and you're getting all different cutscenes and, and kind of like different variations of the ending it's somewhat similar but it's a, a different twist on it so um and i think that's really cool when I played the JRPGs, I've always just felt like it doesn't really cater to that sense. It always feels like it's just a straight path. Um, it's just a straight story. And it's usually kind of tropey from what I've experienced. It's, it's oftentimes it's like we're teenagers and we have to defeat God and we have to save the world. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I would definitely agree with you on the, the more um, more recent popular jrpgs a lot of that is more we're teenagers we got to defeat god we have mm. to you know team up and then you got the romancing part aspects but i would i would when i'm specifically talking about the narrative aspect jrpgs they follow more of the traditional plot pyramid if you're familiar with that sorry it's my teacher coming out of me uh the plot pyramid where you start out you have your introduction then you have the rising action you get to that high point of the mm -hmm. climax then you start falling down the falling then you have that resolution yeah they have a much more straightforward plot and i think that that appeals to me mm -hmm. specific specifically because uh, as you know, I am a little bit of a completionist myself. Yep, so when I'm overwhelmed with like a million different, you know, choices, that can be tough. But there are JRPGs that were there are choice of consequence. We had mentioned Persona. There are so you know, depending on who you romance and who you um, get along with, obviously that, that doesn't affect like the main main story. 
but you can get different experiences out of it depending on who you create relationships with, who you do bonds with. And there are a lot of games like that. For example, we have Persona, uh, Shin Megami Tensei. The game can be completely different depending on like what demons you um, you know recruit to your team because you can make it more difficult for yourself. You can make it more you can make it more challenging. You can miss side quests and Shin Megami Tensei um, based on specific demons you have. Also, the side quest, and I will give you this, the side quest in Western games, I'd say 99% of the time are much better than the GRPG side quests. Um, I think they're, just, they're, they're more involved, more writing, whereas the writing in GRPGs can be a little bit shallow on the side content, but I think the main content, the writing is just like top tier. Like I think Square knocks it out of the park with their writing. Yeah. And same thing with Atlas. Yeah. I got you. So, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, the, I love Persona. So, um, let me get into my history real quick with the JRPG because we heard yours. Um, I started to get into it, um, but I didn't fully get into it. Um, so, let me give the audience and you and everyone my history with the JRPGs. And, and it's not that deep. I'm actually looking to catch up. Um, but the, the, Franchises that I have experienced, um, I've played Fire Emblem. I love Fire Emblem. It's one of my favorite series. Um, I started with Fire Emblem Awakening on the uh, 3DS. I actually, it's funny, I went out and bought a 3DS specifically for this game because I saw the trailer and I was so captivated by the trailer that I had to go out and buy the game. I saw like, first of all, it had like this cool anime art style, which for whatever reason, it was drawing me in. I really liked the art style. Um, and then I saw the combat, the combat, the tactical grid based XCOM, almost like combat, not really, but you know, XCOM adjacent, maybe combat. And then it had the these cool little sprites like um where when you would attack it would show like the guys on each side of the screen and they would kind of go at each other and you'd see them like run and charge and hit them with the sword and it would say 59 and the health bar would go down and i was like oh this is so cool so i loved fire emblem awakening and then i played fire emblem fates and i was like this is awesome so i love fire emblem right um persona I've only played one Persona. <laughs> I've only beaten one Persona, and that was uh, Persona 4 Golden, and I absolutely loved it. Um, it's in my uh, it's in my five out of five games, like like max score games on uh, on my backlog. Um, one of my favorite games of all time. It's not in the top ten, but it I don't think maybe it is. I don't. It, it's good though. It's up there. It's very good. I loved it. Um, but I haven't played Persona three yet. Um, I want to. I haven't beaten Persona 5 or played Royal. I played a bit of Persona 5. I actually got kind of deep. I think I played like 60, 70 hours on the PS4. And for whatever reason, I kind of like got drawn away and I dropped it. Um, I don't remember why. I don't think I got bored or anything. I just got distracted. Um, so you have Persona. You have Fire Emblem. And then the last one really is, is Final Fantasy. Um, Final Fantasy, of course, I played 13, 13 2, Lightning Returns, uh, which was also pretty good. 13-2 was definitely the best. Um, I didn't play 15. I skipped it. I don't know. It just looked like uh, dude bros on a road trip, and I wasn't feeling it. Um, I did play 16. I really liked 16 a lot. I almost dropped it. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, the first half of 16 I thought was kind of a slog, and it was super linear again, um, and I wasn't feeling it. But that second half, like when the story really started to hit, it, it just hooked me, and I loved it. I really liked that game a lot. Um, so that was a great game. Um, as you know, I played Final Fantasy VII recently, the original. I finally beat that. We did a spoiler cast. It's on Games Over Plastic YouTube, people. Check it out. That game was great. I played Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, the Yuffie Interlude, and uh, Rebirth, of course. Those are all great games, right? Um, outside of those main tent pools, those are all mainstream. I'd say Fire Emblem, Final Fantasy, and Persona. Uh, my yeah. only other real JRPG experience that I have, like in my entire life, that I can think of, is Eternites, which was which was a great little indie game, um, and um, Soccer Wars, which was sort of a not really an indie game; it's a Sega game, but a smaller title too, which was also cool. That's pretty much it. Um, I I do also love Persona. Uh, not Persona, I'm sorry. I do also love the Yakuza games, but those are not RPGs. Um, that, that's 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 Japanese. It's Weebery, kind of. Um, but it's not an RPG. It's like an action beat-em-up. But I do love Persona as... Or, wow, why do I like keep saying dragon. Persona? 
Oh, yeah. Uh, like a Dragon. Yeah, Like a Dragon is an RPG. That's true. Yeah. So that's pretty much my history with the JRPG. So it's not very in-depth. Um, so I, I'm kind of looking to want to get into it more and catch up. That's why on my backlog, I have a lot of JRPGs that I want to get to on my backlog. Um, like Shin Megami Tensei Five Vengeance um, that we talked about. I kind of want to get to that. Yeah, currently playing it. Yeah, uh, you told me about Suikoden 1 and 2 HD remaster. That's on my yeah, list. Coming out supposedly August. Uh, yeah, I want to play that. Um, Octopath Traveler 2, you told me about. I want to play that. So that's on my backlog. Unicorn okay, Overlord. Amazing. Have you played Unicorn Overlord? I have not played Unicorn Overlord yet. Have you played any VanillaWare games? I no i have not okay that one uh the art style drew me in again it was kind of tactical i'm a tactics fan for people who don't know i you know i love yeah. xcom and tactics and stuff oh, yeah. so and then wow. the last one is langrisser uh, which again is a tactics game so if you again there's a theme with me i like these tactics games um so those are the ones that oh and metaphor actually metaphor yeah. refantasio which is coming out this year that's oh, one of one of my team. That's one of my really anticipated games. So that's pretty much my history with the JRPG. Um, what do you think? You have any thoughts on those games or any suggestions? Or yeah, I mean the ones you've mentioned, with the exception of um, like Fire Emblem, are all like in my like I, I love most of those series. Um, I'm not a big Fire Emblem guy. I've tried Fire Emblem. I tried Awakening. I am gonna try Three Houses. I did make a, I made a, 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 an agreement with someone that they would play Octopath 2 if I played Three Houses. So I'm going to try Three Houses. Nice. You'll like it, dude. You know, I, I think I will because it's more, they, they focus more on the relationship aspect. It's very similar to Persona. So I think I'm going to like that. Um, part of me for an awakening, I, I didn't, I just couldn't connect with a lot of the characters. What? I tried and I tried. The yeah, awakening I, had great characters and, and it had, a, I know, but it I, had relationships too. Like you could date the chicks. Like there was that Tharja, the witch girl. I liked her. She was, I, cool. just, I don't know. Maybe I was, I don't, I don't know if I was in the right mood for it or it just, it just didn't connect with me. So I am going to try three houses as far as, um, like JRPG series that I would highly suggest is the trail series. That is like. That is one of my favorite series of all time. Probably my third favorite series of all time. And that is a game that has slow burn and a very, very satisfying payoff. Like, you start from the beginning. You start in the Trails of the Sky trilogy. You work your way up. Then you go to Cold, then you go to Cold Steel 1 and 2. Then you go to the Trails from Zero and Trails to Azure. Then you finish the Cold Steel series. Then you get to play Trails, through Re Trails for, um, from Reverie. And Reverie is just like... It takes all the, the 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 three different like arcs of the game and kind of puts them together and mm -hmm. it's like peak and then they're starting the brand new trails through daybreak which has already been out in japan but i've not looked at anything haven't read anything about it, it takes place in a brand new continent that we have you know they they've talked about and they've made reference to mm -hmm. but that's going to take place over there and that comes out in july so i am so excited for that and we've been getting for a long time trails was like took years for the games to come out here like a game would come out in japan in 2015 it would we wouldn't get it till like 2019 mm. now we're we're getting there we had th we've had three mainline trails game four this will be the fourth mainline trails game in the last year and a half so i am very excited for this and they're all different like art styles too like trails through the sky is um you know all the trails through the sky and the, um the cross belt arc games that trails through Z trails from zero and trails to azure those are all like 16-bit um, it's almost like sprite based JRPGs and then it evolves in Cold Steel to get to that full 3D and there's voice acting. So trails Yep. Sorry. I was gonna say no, go I was gonna say, so I'm gonna be honest with you. As much as I would like to play those games, I probably never will because it's just it's too much, dude. Isn't that like isn't it like eight hundred hours worth of games you're talking about here? Like it depends. I mean, <laughs> I think it's worth it, but that's fine. Like that's totally up to you. I mean, it's one of those things that like once you're invested you're invested yeah because it's like you've played so much you want to know what's going to happen like there's so much like i said where it's, it's a slow burn but the payoff is just in it's like so satisfying to see like how some of the characters are at the beginning of the games and see how they are at the end it's mm. so it's it's crazy how much evolution and there's there's so much character development and that is huge for me and there's so much lore in this in this game like you can spend hours 
at like there's libraries in the game mm-hmm. and you can just like look at books in the libraries and just read about the history of the world and like the different wars that have happened and there is so much lore and i've done that i've spent hours just reading on like my tv screen i'm reading these books wow. my wife will be like what are you what are you doing like, oh i'm reading <laughs> well what are you reading about i'm reading about this the erebonian war yeah so uh, it's it's a it's a war in a fake game <laughs> Right. That's cool. Yeah. So I'm thinking about like all the JRPGs tentpole series out there um, that I have yet to experience yet, like that I need to eventually like you have, okay. like I you think, just mentioned. Go, what? Xenoblade. Xenoblade. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get into it. So let me let me list them off here. So we have Xenoblade. Awesome. Seems like an awesome series. Have not played it yet. Um, we have um, the Trails series that you just mentioned. We have the Tales series, which I have not played any of. Um, we have uh, the Yeast East series, Yeast 9, 10, all that stuff, right? Haven't played any of those. Same, hang on. Same dev as Trails. Oh, is it really? Yep. Okay. So it's like there's all of the, and there's, there's a bunch more that I'm sure I'm forgetting, like that I still haven't played yet. It's funny. When you look at my Steam wish list, Sean, it's it's almost all weebery uh, because I because I haven't played these games, so, right? So I added all of these weeb games on my Steam wish list and some on Xbox and PlayStation wish list too, so I can see if they go on sale. So let me read off some of my games from my Steam wish list for you. I've got Tokyo Xanadu EX Plus. Um, I've got Zestaria Saga Two, Octopath Traveler Two, which is now on Game Pass, so I can just play that there. Um, I've got the entire Trails series. I put it in there just in case it goes on a good sale. I've got all of them. Trails in the Sky, Trails in the Sky SC, uh, Trails in the Sky the Third, uh, Trails of Cold Steel, Cold Steel 2, Cold Steel 3, Cold Steel 4, uh, Trails from Zero, Azure, Reverie. I have all these in here, right? Um, let's see. What else? I have this Grand Guilds uh, that I fa- saw recently. Um, I have uh, Way of the Samurai. You ever played that? Way of the Samurai. No, way of the Samurai, no. I've, I've, this looked really cool. I saw a YouTube video about it recently, and I'm like, man, this looks pretty cool. So I added that on there. So I have all of this weebery on my wish list, and I'm just waiting for a good sale to strike. Um, I'm in this place, like I said, where I've, I've played my entire life. I've really obsessed and played MMOs and, and Western RPGs, as well as sports games and some live service games. That's pretty much been what I've done. I've dabbled a little bit in JRPGs and I've enjoyed a lot of the ones that I have played. So I'm wanting to branch out and play more of them. Um, so that's what I'm looking for. I, I really do appreciate and respect your recommendation of the, uh, the trails series. Um, but I don't think I'm ready for that just yet. I feel like that's more of like a, like it, a seasoned a veteran, it, a deep cut. Yeah, it is a lot. Um, what's the a combat more, can get. I'm sorry. What's a more accessible kind of recommendation you think you can give me? Uh, Chrono Trigger. Ooh, Chrono Trigger. Are they, are they, yeah, did they see, ever that, remake that? They should. No, they've never remade it. That's that's something that everyone says when Square's in like debt or they're like, we need to, we need money, we need money. Just boom, remake. Dude, remake. can you imagine um, a HD 2D remake like they just did with Dragon Quest but with Chrono Trigger? With those graphics? It, pump it into my veins. <laughs> um, The reason why I suggest Chrono Trigger is... um. You played Final Fantasy VII and you enjoyed it. I did. Uh, the combat is very similar to Final Fantasy VII. I know that wasn't your favorite aspect, but it's it's a lot smoother because again, it's like that 16-bit, um, you know, art style. Uh, they have a really accessible remake on DS that is like probably the best version to play it on. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also it's also on Steam. You can play it on Steam. Um, one really thing that's key here is the game's only about 20 hours, mm-hmm. so. A lot of JRPGs have that knack for being like, oh my god, it's like a 150-hour investment. Chrono Trigger is from that era where 20 hours was considered a long game. Mm -hmm. Um, And the story is phenomenal. It's not my favorite JRPG by any means. I know a lot of people have hold Chrono Trigger up, let's say, on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. Not my favorite, but it is a great access point and a really good point for someone who's played some JRPGs but is not like a veteran. I would highly suggest Chrono Trigger. And you have not been spoiled on anything, right? I don't think so, no. Oh, then your mind will be blown. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll have to get to I'll add that to the backlog, the never-ending backlog. I have like 40 games in my backlog, John, including a lot of the JRBGs that we already mentioned. Like Fire Emblem Three Houses is in my backlog. Um, but I, I have to get a Switch 2 first when that comes out. Um, like we talked about, Shin, Shin Megami Tensei Five, Octopath yeah. Traveler Which 2. I, yeah. 
I mean, Octopath Traveler 2 is pretty accessible as well. Uh, I, w- I would suggest that. But the game is a lot longer than Chrono Trigger. Like, it's, a, it's very a lot longer. And the story is a little bit more uh, complex, which you might like that. I like considering that. Considering you're a Western I like, RPG. I like yeah. story. Um, the story is much more mainline in Chrono Trigger. And there's side quests. There's, like, Chrono Trigger has side quests, but not, not really. Um, whereas Octopath is, like, a dedicated, like, this is your side quest blog. And you can look at all your side quests. Yeah, I enjoy a really good story. I enjoy choices. I enjoy fun combat. Um, I like. I do like turn-based combat. I also like action combat as long as it's well implemented. I enjoy both. Um, and I also kind of, and I think this is one of the ma- one of the strengths of the JRPG. Um, I don't think this is your main thing. This isn't your. You're not huge into this, but I know a lot of the JRPG fans are. Is the whole romance side. Um, that's really big in the JRPG. And I do kind of enjoy that. Like I like in persona how like you have your social links um, and you get to like hang out with your friends. All oh, the friends are always awesome too, but you also get to hang out with the girls and then you get to pick the girl. And then there's always a debate like who the best girl is. And I know that's not something that you're into, but I have fun with that. Like it's fun. It's not serious, but it's fun arguing with people like, no, Yukiko is yeah. the best girl. What are you talking about? You know, just like stupid stuff. No, they, yeah, no, I hear that. And I have my series where I do like that. Like I do like that in persona. Like I, I think there's yeah. th- I don't think every JRPG needs to have no, that. Like, no. I shouldn't be like running around, you know, um, Final Fantasy trying to, you know, with Cloud trying to romance people. Yeah, no, you yeah, can't force that should it be, I think, yeah, I think that should, that, it's good when it's built into the story. That's fine. But yeah, like the, 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 the I think there's a certain art style it really works with. Mm-hmm. Like the Persona art style it works with. The Trail series has that. You do have, mm. it, it's not as in-depth as per- Persona. But there is an aspect where you romance and there are aspects where it's like, okay, you need to, depending on the decisions you made in the game and the, the social links you formed, mm-hmm. the relationships you've built, there is a quote, you know, a, 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 a girl that the main character, and I'll, I'll say, for example, in two of the games, this character Lloyd, there's, an, there's a, a certain part in the game where Lloyd and, this, and another character, depending on the relationship, you get to go on a date. Yeah, it's cool. I, I like that you, stuff. You're cool. Yeah, you're quote unquote spending your last night together. I like romance. Last like uh, I'm a romantic yeah. guy, not really. But like in Bioware games, for example, Bioware is famous for this. Like when you play Mass Effect, like you always have like two or three girls or guys, whatever you're into, um, that you know that you can actually romance and 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 kind of hook up with. Um, and that's always cool. Like in the Dragon Age series, everyone knows Morgan was was awesome. The witch love her um but it's just it's it's a fun little side aspect it doesn't need to be in every game it shouldn't be forced in because then it's just awkward it's like what are you doing um but when it's a core part of the game i like that as a side thing it's like because it's a role-playing game you're playing a role that's the way i see it so if i'm like the hero and i'm out there saving the world i can save the world but you can't like you know you can't have a a chick like what's up with that you know it's kind of weird i don't know why obsidian hates romance um avowed is not going to have any romance but that's fine i don't really care um but yeah, yeah. the outer worlds didn't either. Yeah, and that's fine. They I had, love the outer they, worlds. They had romance, but with like the side characters. Like you weren't romancing people. Yeah, yeah, and that's fine. Um, Bioware, uh, Dragon Age is gonna have romance, so that's cool. I enjoy romance on the side, um, but I think like for these games here, I definitely want to get to uh, Octopath Two as, as something I want to get to very soon. You also recommended the Suikoden remakes when they come out. Now, are those like? kind of accessible to newer oh yeah very very accessible um easy not easy but like easy enough for someone who's played some jrpgs like if you beat final fantasy i know you said you used some of the oh i cheated um, i cheated i know you (laughs) did but i i i have faith in you that you could have done it without doing that um just because it was more of like we need to we want to do the spoiler cast like very quickly yeah um but yeah, it's very accessible, easy. Like, like let's take a look here. I, I played Suikoden in one when I was probably seven years old, and I was fine. Yeah. Uh, does it have an easy mode? I probably put it on easy mode to be honest with you. Uh the HD, uh, the HD probably will have an easy mode. Yeah, I'll probably. And just there probably that. will be one. You know, a really good thing about all the re-releases of old JRPGs too is they the, a lot of the quality of life features. Like yeah. they have the fast forward button, so you can just like instead of walking extremely slow because the PS One could only render so much at a time you have the fast forward button where you just like, kind of just, like speed right through it mm-hmm. which is great uh the writing in sweet is really i think you will enjoy the writing in sweet okay it, it is a lot like that's a that was one of my big disappointments with um 
Ayud and Chronicles Hundred Heroes was a rating compared to Sweden it was a huge step down. Was it? Um yeah, well there wasn't I mean, there was hundred and twenty heroes, not just a hundred. And again, it was a mile wide and an inch deep in character depth. But Suikoden does not have that problem. That's right. We talked about that. Yeah. Like uh, none of the characters you said were really that deeply fleshed out. Even like the core couple people. Like the, you would think that they would at least have like maybe five or six people that had like a real deep story. Like, but apparently not, huh? Yeah. No. Nah. Um, another really um, accessible JRPG is the Mario RPG games. Like I, I adore the Mario RPG games. Like the, they, they range from Paper Mario. We just had the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door remake, which mm-hmm. is a top 10 game for me ever. That game's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, my neighbor's moment is long. That's all right. It happens. Don't um, worry about it. <laughs> um, the Mario and Luigi games, we just got an announcement for a new one. Those are like classic, like really good JRPGs with not just like turn based combat, but they like actually, it's like active turn based combat. So like you have to press certain buttons at certain times to do more damage. And the writing in those Mario RPG games is. Mm-hmm hilarious is, like is that the one that dustin was was kind of taking a dump on on sacred saying that he was oh, so t- bored oh, oh a thousand year door yeah i don't know what he's talking him about and micah both years. were saying that it was yeah. so boring I oh my god why. they're amazing games they're amazing games um so I, I, uh, while you were talking and I was listening, um, but, um, I was pulled up my PlayStation wish list as well. And it's just pure weebery, Sean. Listen to this. I got Crisis Core, uh, Final Fantasy Reunion. I've got Great Blue game. Reflection one and two. Okay. Um, I've got Final Fantasy six, Final Fantasy four, Rise of the Ronin, uh, Live, Al- Live Alive, Live Alive, Live Alive, whatever. Yep. Octopath two, Unicorn Overlord, Lane Grisser. Uh, Stellar Blade, that's not an RPG, really. Um, all the Legend of Heroes games, the entire series. Um, and then Yuta, Yuta Waramono, or whatever, uh, 1 and 2, or whatever. Because those kind of looked like, uh, from what I saw, it had like some strategy, like uh, RPG combat, mixed with like Persona visual novel type elements. So I was like, that might be interested. Interesting. So it's funny, like my wish list is just pure weebery. Um, but it's just because I just haven't played so many of these games. Like I feel like I need to get to them. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And they just announced um at the Nintendo Direct a remake of a, a game that we never got. It came mm-hmm. out in nineteen ninety three, Romancing Saga Two. Oh, I saw and that. I yeah, I know you you had brought up like the relationship aspect and those um saga games, specifically the romancing saga series, a lot of that is predicated on like depending on the choices you make with characters the ending will change oh that's cool so that might be up your that might be up your alley because there are like there are like i know in that remake game i never played the original because it again it never came out here Mm -hmm. but i know there's like six or seven different endings depending on um relationships you build with characters and that's way ahead of its time that came out in 93 yeah so where would i start with that though uh you can play them in any order you can play them in any order oh they're not really connected standalone no, okay. they're all standalone. And there's a new one coming, yeah. Romancing Saga 2, Revenge of the Seven is the new one. That, that's the one I'm talking about. That's the one I'm talking about. Okay, yeah. I'll it's a remake of a nineteen ninety three game that never came out here. I'll put so that I never played it. But yeah. I'll put that on the wish list. Yeah. It's funny I'm looking here. Of course it's not coming to Xbox. Poor Xbox. Xbox definitely got the shaft when it comes to the JRPGs. Um I don't know why. Nobody buys them there. Nobody buys them there. I guess not. Yeah. Um, but even like in the 360 era when they had a big audience, like they still, they did, the 360 did have some JRPGs, um, but it didn't. Lost Odyssey. Lost, Lost Odyssey is on my wish list as well. I've heard that. It's so good. I've heard that's like the real Final Fantasy 15 is what some people have said. What do you think? Uh, it's like a, it, it is very similar to Final It has some of the old writers from Final Fantasy on there. Mm. Uh, I played it in 2022, thanks to Mr. Matty Plays. He convinced me at PAX East where we were sitting outside, and he's like, you need to play Lost Odyssey. And I played it like immediately that night I started it. Mm. So good. Yeah. So, all right. This has been, this has been really good. Um, I do want to say that I'm so excited, Sean, for you to play Fire, uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses because as we mentioned, you know, I'm a huge Fire Emblem fan and you haven't been into it, but I feel like I feel like it's time, dude. It's time for you to realize the greatness. Like you you just you need to go into it with the right mindset, with the clear mindset that you're going to oh, I will. that you're going to have fun with the strategy combat, you're going to embrace it, the tactics, you're going to beat the AI's ass. Um, and you're going to have some fun with the story and the and the and the relationships and stuff. And it's going to be a good time. man. I, I really hope that this is the game that that wakens you up to the greatness of Fire Emblem because it's one of my favorite series. Um, I love it. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be starting it probably either tonight or Monday, depending. Dude, it, uh, I'm so jealous of you, man, because you got the summer off. Like, Monday, you get to just chill and play video games. You know what I'm going to be doing Monday? Not only do I have to work, work not only do I have to work Monday, but it's my first day of my actual job. I'm going to be handling live claims, uh, talking to customers and contractors and stuff and adjusting claims. So that's going to suck. But <laughs> what one more thing we forgot to mention. Yeah. The music of JRPG. Oh, we did. Oh, my gosh. The, I don't know how we just, it just randomly occurred to me. The music of these JRPGs are just like this is something that I constantly listen to, like. The Persona soundtrack. Oh, it's the best. Oh my gosh. So good. Like you can't even like people who don't even like like video games or know like they they're like this, this music like I'll play Persona music in my classroom. It's time my students will be like, This music's bumping. It I'm is. Like, yeah, I know. Um yeah, this music is so good. It's and, so good. Final Fantasy has great music. Final Fantasy sixteen, some of the soundtracks that they had, like when you're fighting bosses and stuff, were just just epic. Mm-hmm. Just so good. Find find the flame. I've listened to it every single day for the last year. Because uh, it was about a year ago around this time, Final Fantasy 16 came out. Listen to it every day since then. Yeah. At least once a day. I think that's a um, great call out. Definitely amazing music um, in the JRPGs. Um, I think that's the, the main areas that the JRPGs excel at. Um, they excel in art. Um, very stylized. Either you got like the HD2D or the, or the awesome sprite artwork, or you have like some cool anime looking art, um, which is unique. Well, I guess it's not unique if you watch a lot of anime, but for someone like me, because I don't watch anime, that art style is unique. Um, And I'm like, oh, this is different. I kind of like it. It's kind of cool. The characters look cool. You know what I mean? They got spiky hair. They got swords. You know, you got waifus. It's cool. But and they also have the music. The music's banging. And they always have. Well, they don't always have a lot of times they have really fun combat. Um, I enjoy a good turn based combat. I enjoy tactics based combat. Um, So like these are these are things that I really do like. Um, about games and JRPGs, uh, you know, it's a strength of theirs. I feel like. Yeah, I'm so. You know what? The more you, the more you talk about it, I'm. I'm so sad you're not like you. It's gonna take you a long, long time if you ever do get the trails because I think you would love the combat <laughs> because it is turn based, but it's also like there's some tactics elements mm. to it. Like, oh, oh my gosh! And I just want to say shout out to Lara, who's best girl. I'll say it for you guys. For you, I know you. You're into this. Best girl for trails, Lara. Laura Trails series. Let me look. Yeah. Trails series. L A R A. Yeah, L A U R A. Okay, let me try to look her up. The, here's one thing that's kind of like because it sounds like the trails is something that would be kind of up my alley. But here's one thing that kind of turns me off. In addition to the fact that it's like 700 plus hours, we talked about this, Sean. There's no voice acting. For like, for like, I got to play 400 hours to get to voice acting. I like voice acting. I don't want to just read only text. See, to me, I would rather have, if games, if we had to choose one or the other, I would choose just text. Are you serious? You don't like yeah, voice I acting? Would, I, I, no, it's not that I don't like voice acting, but if I had to choose between the two, mm. like if, I, if they said moving forward, all games are going to be 100% voice acted or all games are going to be 100% text, mm-hmm. I choose the text. So is this um, is this Laura the blue haired chick with the ponytail the long yep, hair or whatever our side okay yeah Laura our side she looks yeah, cool she is yeah oh my god she is first of all her story is insane like her arc mm-hmm. her like character development and character growth is insane like it come it's there's so many twists and turns and it's very much like a very heartwarming heartfelt story mm-hmm. plus she is ridiculously strong in combat like nice. she's always like in that. my party like i she's always in my party she she's a huge she's a, a swordsman mm-hmm. um she's so strong she has some of the best moves some of her s craft move which is like a special special move some of her s craft moves are absolutely like to die for like they're insane okay she takes out so many people and I just like her as a character, and I always, like, on my first playthrough of Trails games, like, if you can romance a character and, like, you know, get get that strong, I always pick Lara first. Like, I gotta go to Lara. Gotta get her relationship up. She's, uh, she is introduced in the Cold Steel series. Okay. Gotcha. 
Yeah, so I think I will eventually get to that series, um, but I, I, it's not going to be right away. It's going to be later down the oh, line, I, I think. Um, but I do want to get to it and play it because I hear you talk about it so much. I hear Maddie talk about it so much, and it does sound kind of awesome. Like I like how like if you put in the time and actually play through all these games, um, it sounds like you really do get like a big payoff, especially with like Trails into Reverie and like apparently that's just like pure fan service, like bringing everyone it's- together and stuff like. It's. I would never have thought they were going to be able to pull everyone together. And there's like a whole aspect where it makes sense for like some characters who are dead, you can mm-hmm. still play as in a certain aspect of the game. And it makes sense in that universe. Like it makes sense in that specific part in that universe. And mm-hmm. you're like, wow, they did it. There's like 70 something characters to choose from, like for your party. And it's like, this is awesome. And all of them are fleshed out. It's like, this is so cool. Okay. So I just posted my backlog in the chat there. Um, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you this honor, Sean. Okay, if yep. you pull up the backlog there, uh, I'm going yeah, to. Al- I'm going to allow you to pick the next JRPG that I play from this list. Um, you can pick any of these JRPGs in here. <laughs> Maybe you can even add one that's not in here if you really want. Um, and I'll play whichever game you suggest. So uh, go ahead and pick one. So I'm looking right now here. I'm going to put this on the screen in the video, too, so they'll see it. Some some of them are very tempting because, like, for example, you have Persona 3 Reload here. I do. I've played Persona 3 multiple times, but I have I did not play it when it came out, the remake, this year. Mm. I did not play it when it came out. So that would be an interesting game for me and you to play together at the same time, Ooh. given that I've played it. I've played the old ones. That's really interesting. But, oh, my gosh. Then you also have Romancing Saga 2, that game. I that just added just it, yeah. About. I know you just added it, and I feel like that'd be right up your alley, and I haven't played that one either, so we could, you know. Uh, that's on PlayStation, also, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. There's also my beloved Octopath Traveler 2. Yep. My goatee from last year, and a top five game of all time for me. Ooh, that was your game, game of the year? Yeah, did, last year. Did, my game of the year. You played Baldur's Gate 3, didn't you? So you liked Octopath no, more than Baldur's Gate? Close to, Baldur's Gate 3 was not even close to my game of the year. Did you beat Baldur's Gate? Yeah. Wow. Okay. All it wasn't right. in my, it was in my top ten, but it wasn't it wasn't um it was like closer to the closer to the bottom half. That's crazy. Dude, there was man. so many good games last year. Like the top ten la- la- segue. The top ten last year was like so I could make an argument for like any of those games could have been one for like another year. It was a really was strong year. Left. Yeah. All right. So I made my decision. Okay. What is it? What's the verdict? Your next your next JRPG that you are gonna play is Octopath Traveler 2. Okay. It's done. Yep. You're going to play it. Sean, it's on Game Pass. You don't, have, you don't have to buy it. That, that is nice. You know you know us Xbox gamers, we don't like to buy games. So Yeah, I know. You no, guys I'm just, hate buying games. I'm just kidding. I buy games. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, buy enough. I buy enough for you. I like to buy I, games. I bought Octopath a few times. Yeah. So, all right. Sean has spoken, and, and I will abide. Um, the next JRPG, I'm going to emphasize that, that I play will be Octopath Traveler 2 because I already have a to-do list. Right now, Sean, I'm playing uh, Diablo 4, and I'm really yep. I'm really loving it. Fun game. I'm really enjoying it, playing Necromancer. Good stuff. Good story. What are you playing it on? What are you playing it on? I'm playing on Xbox Series X. Okay. Um, it's great. I could play it on PC, too. I have a great PC, but I don't know. I just... I feel like I, I feel like if I played that game, I'd get way too into it, dude. It, and I feel like it's really fun, and I'm liking the story. And you know, Blizzard does amazing cutscenes. Um, did you see? Yeah. Did you see the the cutscene that they did for the new expansion coming out? The uh, the, I, the no, hate I or whatever. Watch anything of it. No, oh, I didn't. dude, that was so good. Anyways, maybe I should play it on my Steam Deck. Yeah, yeah, you play it on Steam Deck. I'm sure it's great on there. Um, so I'm playing Diablo 4 right now. And then after that, I'm going to play Yakuza 3, which is not an RPG. Um, and then after that, I'm going to play The Witcher 3, which is going to be a massive game. That's going to take forever. That's like a 100, 120 hour game. And then, and then after that, Sean will be you. I'll be ready for a JRPG. That will be Octopath Traveler 2. So that's my, okay. that's my list. But there is an issue. What if, because I've been waiting for a long time for that metaphor re what if that comes out before I get to Octopath? Do I have to play no, Octopath I, first? No, you can play metaphor because I'll play, because I'm going to play metaphor when it comes out too. So I would rather have us, like okay. if, if I had to, I would rather have you play Octopath, but if if it metaphor comes out first and I'm playing it, I want to play at the same time. All right. We, maybe we can do a spoiler cast for some of these. That, well, I mean, that's, why, that's why I wanted to do it. Me and you would probably do a spoiler because cool. I know how it is. 
Yeah. Hodge probably won't. Hodge's not no. touching that. He don't have time for these games. He's too busy. I don't even think he would touch that if he had time. Yeah, I don't think he would either. Um, well, he likes he likes disgusting Weebery like Kingdom Hearts. I mean, you guys did your your amazing episode. That was a great You're episode, really by the way. Oh, thank you. It was one of I, I was I was a little excited. for That, that is our best performing episode. Well, on on the Games Over Plastic channel, that's our best performing episode. Um, Actually, our best performing episode overall, though, was our Final Fantasy VII Rebirth video, but that was on my channel. Um, that one has almost 600 views, I think. But but yeah, though, that, uh, what was I going to say? That video that you guys did with the Kingdom Hearts was awesome, and it's doing well, and people love it, so I was really happy to see that. And it was really cool that you got Dustin and uh, Dustin and Brad on there. People show up. Check that Kingdom out, people. Hearts. Check that out, guys. If you're a Kingdom Hearts fan, check out on Games Over Plastic. We got an awesome uh, series retrospective with Sean Mason, Hodge, and then also Brad Ellis and Dustin Furman from Last Stand Media. It was really good. There's a nice shameless plug for some Weebery there. All right. So I think we've said just about all that we need to say. I want to go ahead and pass the mic to you for any final thoughts, Sean. Final thoughts on JRPGs, series that you want to shout out, anything that you want to put on my radar that we haven't yet mentioned. Take it away, sir. Um, I just want to say first, thank you for having me. I really appreciate this aspect to talk about JRPGs. I know um, it was fun. You're, you're much more into the Western RPGs. That's okay. And again, like I said, if anyone out there prefers Western RPGs to JRPGs, that's that's completely fine with me. Play what you want, play what you enjoy. Mm -hmm. JRPGs just happen to be my favorite genre. Um, there are so many series, too many series to name, to be honest. I mean, you have I'm just gonna I'm just gonna rattle off some right Please. now. You got Final Fantasy, you got Trails, you got Kingdom Hearts, Persona, Octopath, Xenoblade, Golden Sun, Romancing Saga, Tales of, East, Near, Mario RPG, Suikoden, Breath of Fire, Grandia. Pokemon. We didn't even mention Pokemon. That's like baby's first RPG. Yeah. Uh, the various Chrono games, Chrono Trigger, Chrono um, Chrono Cross. You had the regular Saga games, Fire Emblem, Dragon Quest, Fire Emblem. Yeah, exactly. There's so many good ones out there, and honestly, I think that with JRPGs, there is one that you will like. If you're like, I don't like JRPGs. I think there is a series out there that people would enjoy. Like, there's probably a JRPG series out there that you will enjoy. Some of them take aspects from the West, like Western design, like. Final Fantasy 16. If you didn't tell me that was made by Square Enix, you might think that's a, J a Western game. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of it's pretty Western in the, in the theme yeah. and stuff. Okay, were you, were you done? Were you satisfied? That was good. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, well, I do want to thank you, Sean, for coming on. I appreciate your time. You know, you are one of my favorite people. So thank you for coming on. I had a lot of fun. Um, this was eye opening for me. Um, as we mentioned all throughout this episode, you know, I don't have a vast experience in the JRPG, but the ones that I have experienced, I have mostly really liked a lot. Um, so I feel like this is good. There is a wide sea out there for me to sail on and some great games for me to experience. And on the flip side, Sean, I feel like you need to experience some more Western RPGs. We got to get you. We, you need to play these Bioware games. You got to play mass effect. It's my favorite game series of all time. Uh, they got the remake. Yeah, they got the remasters on there. All three you can play. Dude. I've been saying I'm going to play Mass Effect for like three years now. Yep. Since since Cog talked about Mass Effect at um, the Butler LSM mm -hmm. Last Stand Media event, I've been saying I need to play Mass Effect. Dude, since it, that was almost three years ago. It is so good. If you like a really good narrative with choices where you get to impact the story and you get to pick who lives and dies and you get to either save someone or kill someone and uh, you get to save the world. Um, it's really awesome. And it carries over, as you might know, from story to yeah. story, like your saves will carry over. And as a platinum trophy hunter, um, you can get, get four platinums. Um, so you get the platinum for Mass Effect 1, Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3. And then because it's like the legendary edition, if you beat all three of them and get the platinums, you get a fourth platinum. So that's pretty cool. I think I... I know I have to do that. So, so, much. so I will, I will broaden my horizons and experience some of these JRPGs and you'll have to do a little bit of that on the Western side. And in the end, Sean, we will both be winners because RPGs just in general are the best genre out there. I feel like RPGs are awesome and everyone should just have fun and enjoy their games. That's my final thought. Have fun. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Sean, thank you so much again for your time, sir. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Final thoughts here as we get out of here. Anything? May your heart be your guiding key. <laughs> oh, no. All right, guys. Shout out to the Kingdom Hearts fans out there. Uh, that is a series that I will probably not play, but 
I am going to be playing Octopath 2. I am going to be playing Romancing Saga like you told me about. Uh, I am going to be playing Metaphor. So you're going to be seeing Midnight experience a bit more weebery. Who knows? Maybe I'll turn into a weeb. I hope not. That would be disgusting. But you never know, man. Maybe these games will win me over. Uh, I will give them the chance. Um, but that's been it for us. This is Midnight and Sean Mason signing off. I hope you guys have a great day and enjoy your gaming. Peace out, everyone. Bye.